welcome back to Sewing From Scratch. You know by the title of this video, we are going through everything I made in November, and it's a pile. Like, let me tell ya. Let's get to it. So I think the thing was that I had blocked out December or I have blocked out December for Christmas sewing so I was like I gotta get everything I want to get done for 2020 in November now like I need to sew and then things just kept popping up and I sewed a lot and I loved it I love I loved it I love sewing so let's start with my November mix some of these you have seen already and others are hot off the machine. So let's get to it. So the first thing I made was my pair of Arden pants. These are made in linen from Blackbird Fabrics. These are the washed linen two in the color olive. I have made Arden pants before, but I made them as shorts in the summer, also in linen, but a heavier weight linen, you might remember. I made them one size smaller and then I made them a size bigger this time. And honestly, I'm going to have a video coming out about this, but like society has just given me and I'm sure others out there this this like unreal expectation about sizes. Like I have this mental block that I of like of going up a size. It's like something that's been weighing on me and I'm trying to get through myself. So I hope that I can help others by making that video. Don't be afraid to go up a size and I have to get through that myself. Like, who cares what that number is? That's just a number. Especially in the sewing world, the numbers mean different things. It doesn't matter. You are size you, and the beauty of sewing for yourself is that you can, you can tailor clothes to fit your body. And that's the beautiful thing about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all teary-eyed. <laughs> anyway, Arden Pants, love them. I did add, I think I added two inches to the rise and so that I could have the more high waist. Now, in hindsight, I think I should have maybe added just one inch and I actually think I might have even liked them the way they were. So for the next pair, I'm gonna try them just the way they were. But I, I definitely wanted them to be high rise. I don't like things when, when things cut me across my belly so much. Um, just creates this weird silhouette. So I wanted them to be high rise because of that reason, but also I don't really have any high rise pants that I can wear like cropped shirts with. So I wanted to make a pair like that. And yeah, I've been wearing them nonstop. I've actually been wearing them tucked Mommy. with tucked in shirts a lot because I really like that jogger waistband. I did the cuffed bottoms and then I did adjust the length just because I do have short legs. So I adjusted them just so that they weren't like super long. I do still want them baggy just to be like an oversized comfortable look, but I did need to shorten the legs because I just didn't want them pooling at the ankle because I wanted to show that really beautiful elasticated cuff. The other thing with the Arden pants is because I extended the pockets, I think it's because it's a longer area and it's a lightweight linen and I didn't reinforce the bias cut there on the pocket. It was like really gapy. So I actually did something really fun to fix this. I was gonna like, kind of tack it in or maybe even take it apart and fix it. But what I ended up doing was just running a hand based stitch along there and then gathering it up and tying it off. And I think it adds just a little very subtle element. You, I mean, you don't know it unless you're looking for it, but I really just think it's a nice little touch and now they don't gape so much. So one thing to consider if you're using a lightweight fabric to reinforce those pocket cuts, it is not in the instructions, but I do recommend it. All right, the next thing is my husband's jacket that I made him, his hooded denim jacket. I have a whole video on this, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but yeah, he, he's been asking for a while for this. So, I, well, he asks once and then I'm just like, yeah, I'll do that. And then I never do it. And it's honestly, it feels so bad. So I finally made the time to do it for him and I did, and he really is enjoying it. And I'm fairly happy with how it turned out. You can watch the video to see what I don't love about it. But yeah, I made that for him and I used I upcycled denim and an old sweater. So I really spent virtually nothing on this make. 
Then I started on my Camden cape. This is really a seam work heavy month for me. I've been wanting to try more of their patterns and I just, I just did it. So my Camden cape, again, I have a full video on this, but I used some beautiful felted wool from Blackbird Fabrics. This is 100% felted wool and it is in the color Marsh Brown. And then the lining is a thrifted, silky type fabric that I picked up at Value Village on my anniversary with my husband. So that's kind of a nice little touch to throw in there. Just reminds me of that. However, I have not worn this yet. I have not worn it. I took it when we went shopping the other day, but it was so nice that I didn't need to wear my cape. So I still have not worn it out in outside world. Um, so hopefully one day soon, I'll get to do that. Grocery shopping, I guess. Okay, and some of you may know this if you watch the New Horizons Designs uh, YouTube channel, you know that I make videos for them, and one of the videos I made was this adorable gnome bag. I am still obsessed with this. I made this a month ago, and I'm still obsessed with it. It is so freaking cute, and I hope that I have to make more for Christmas. I don't know that I do because we don't buy that many gifts, but I might just make them as gifts or like as decorations, you know, stuff them with something and make a pillow <gasps> stay tuned <laughs> anyway I think it's so cute and you can watch the New Horizons video I'll link it below if you want a tutorial on how to make this cute gnome bag along with my gnome bag I made some gift bags uh, I guess not along with it but a separate time I made some other gift bags so I did like a more traditional rectangular gift bag and then I also did a wine gift bag which I, I I haven't seen this before and I actually searched it and I couldn't find anything so I decided to do it myself and I <laughs> love it again hope I have to buy some wine for some people or you know whatever that's good it's a good gift to give when you have to go to someone's house that does it's not happening this year but you know what I mean you know what I mean wine makes a perfect gift and wine bags are super cute and I really like how I made mine and I love that you can make it super personal and add all kinds of embellishments of course I have a video on this I will link it in the description box below for you to check out how to make these and they're all reversible too all right I made some Seamwork Ace Tops. So I made this tie-dye version. It's kind of a wearable muslin. I made it in a size 12 simply because I had that printed on printer paper, like at home PDF, and I had cut it out and everything. And then I also ordered it AO file, um, AO format. And so I made this size 12. I was skeptical that it would fit. It does fit as a layering piece. I wear it around the house. I actually really love it. It's super, super comfortable, but I don't know that I would wear it like out in public like this. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, and then, so then for my next one, I sized up to the size 14, which is the one I'm wearing now. And it so it has a funnel neck on it, which is what drew me to this. I've been wanting some more turtleneck style shirts. Love that. I uh, it is I think I might shorten the sleeves a bit to be more bracelet length. I could probably take out an inch, inch and a half on the sleeve yet, and that would be good. I do like the length on the other one, so this would be the one that I would shorten. And I do find that the shoulder could be a little higher, which I guess would change the sleeve too. So I think for my next one, if I, you know, whenever, I would do the size 12 bodice and sleeve and then just maybe grade it out in the waist and hip. I don't know. Maybe the size 12 wasn't that bad. I don't know. I just... It's almost like there's some extra fabric here, you know, in, and it's not sitting right up on my shoulders, but I serves its purpose. I really love the, the color. I got this fabric from Simplify. I can link it below for you guys. If you're a Seamwork member, you get a discount, so make sure you do that. If you're not a Seamwork member, have a link down in the description box as well. But I, I made this to go with something that I'm gonna show you in a minute. And yeah, I'm just super, super in love with the color of it. And... I'm probably gonna wear it a lot. The only thing is that the waist of it around my hips, it like flares out. And I'm not sure if it's something I did or what, but I might take that in and I might adjust that on the pattern for next time. Uh, we'll see. So the reason I made the ace, well not the reason, I mean one of the reasons, 
that I made this ace top was to go with my seamwork ginger skirt. This skirt is, I mean, this might be the, my favorite thing I made this month, which is saying a lot because I love my cape and yeah, this might be, the, it, it's like virtually flawless. I did hand sewing on it. I put a lot of love into it. I did an invisible zipper, which I think is my first ever real invisible zipper. Um, it's just gorgeous and I just I love the waistband I was wasn't sure which waistband to do there's three different op options but I went with the the curved kind of they remind me of lips so I'm gonna call them lips lip waistband and uh, I just love it I just love it and I love the look of it with this shirt tucked into it it's just I'm just obsessed and I can't wait to wear it at Christmas even if we're staying home I'm wearing it I just love it. It is just gorgeous. I made it in this beautiful heathered kind of flecked teal wool. Melange wool blend suiting from Blackbird Fabrics. If they still have it, I will link it below. It's, it's dead stock and so was that Camden Cape wool it was dead stock from Blackbird. Um, I think they might still have some of that felted wool. I will link it below. Again, you get a, you actually get a discount at Blackbird when you're a Seamwork member as well. And I do have a full video on that whole whole wool haul wow say that 10 times fast if you're interested in everything i got there yeah some gorgeous gorgeous fabrics but yeah my ginger i just i love it the waistband of this is gorgeous this is one of those patterns that it has some really cool finishing or like um construction details and instructions that are just like mind-blowing and they turn out so gorgeous it's gorgeous and again i'm just obsessed with it all right, I also made my very first bra. Like my very first bra. I've never made a sports bra and I've never made an underwire bra and I tried it and it's been something I wanted to do all year and I don't know what finally gave me the push. I've, I follow Liz Sews, I follow So YYC. Um, they, they both make these beautiful bras and now I follow more because I'm now into it. But I kind of, I was just talking to Deb one day, I think I asked her a question and um, then we were talking and now I, I'm a bra maker. So I made this bra and I, it turned out like way better than I expected and I think maybe that's the benefit of waiting longer is now I'm a better sewer and it's just, it's beautiful and I really enjoyed the process of it, it was really fun to make. However, the cups are just a smidge too small, so I'm gonna have to make a new one. But I, again, I'm like, my body is changing, so every time I try it on, it's a little less small in the cups. So I think I'm maybe just gonna wait a little bit. Um, again, December is gonna be about gifts, so I'm not gonna be sewing for myself, I don't think, too much. <laughs> and so anyway, um, I just love it. It's the Ruby bra from, and I will. I got all my supplies from Deb at So YYC, so you can get through her, or you can buy through Bra Maker Supply, which I think is where Deb gets all her things, and that's where you can buy the uh, the Ruby bra pattern from Pinup Girls. The pattern is beautifully done. You can use either foam cups or fabric cups. I use fabric cups. It's really good for a beginner, I think. I think like I think that's I think it's a pretty good beginner pattern for bra making. I didn't really have any trouble with it. I did follow Deb's um like fitting little story she did on Instagram, so I can try to link to that. I'm not sure if I can, but I'll link to her Instagram anyway and yeah it was really good she shows you how to do like um, a muslin without really spending hardly any money so I did that but I still messed up on the cups anyway uh, yeah I just love it and I'm good I think I'm gonna do a full video on that so let me know in the comments if you want to see a full video on my first bra what it cost what I kind of I did to make it how I made it my resources I used and that kind of thing let me know in the comments below if you are interested in um, like a beginner bra making video okay I also made my daughter these shorts sort of I upcycled one of her skirts to make these shorts I have a full video on this so I will leave that below but these are the Coachella shorts from striped swallow designs one of my most favorite little girl shorts patterns. I have the ladies too, I just haven't made them for myself yet. Um, but yeah, super, super cute and I just, yeah, they're really cute. She really loves them. Then I made the Seamwork leggings. 
all three of them. <laughs> I made the Aries, I made the Shelly, and I made the Manila because I did a comparison video and it's coming out on Saturday. So if you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so that you can see that comparison video of these three sewing patterns. I made them all in size medium. I used Sheer Perfection Foundation Cotton Lycra, I think it's called, or Sheer Solids Cotton Lycra from Sheer Perfection Fabrics, and then I used a little bit of tool in the contrast panel of the Aries. But yeah, you can hear all about that, all the comparisons. Um, that I have a sh chart showing, you know, the patterns and then the different characteristics and which have which and yada yada yada. Hit the subscribe button so you can see that it's coming out on Saturday. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna talk about is my Ruth wrap dress. Yes, this dress is named Ruth. If you know, you know. And I made it in this Sheer Perfection fabric linen that I stamped, potato paint stamped. This is a video I made back in the fall, so I will link to that in the description box as well if you haven't seen that. It's finally time for me to cut into this. I wanted to have it done in the fall, for, kind of for Thanksgiving, because um, it is more of those colors, but I just didn't get it done. I have a few things to say about this. Number one, it's too small. I made the size 10, again, back to the sizing thing. Um, and it's like, I can wear it, it fits. I don't know, I think I would like a size 12 better. So there's that, and then you'll notice that it's not hemmed. Because I am so indecisive, I can't decide if I want to leave it kind of that midi length, shorten it to like a, just below the T. I guess it's more of a T length the way it is now, or midi length. Um, do I wanna raise it to the knee? Do I want it above the knee? I can't decide. I put it on and I was like, I told my husband, I feel like, like I'm wearing religious robes. And he was like, no, it looks good. He liked the length of it. And I was like, really? I was thinking I would shorten it. And then I kind of folded it up to show him and he's like, oh yeah. So now I can't decide, I can't decide. So let me know, would it look better shortened or as long as it is? I am only five foot two, so I, it's a lot of fabric. The other thing is this linen I used is, is a heavier linen and I know it like, through washing it will soften up but how much am i really going to wear it and wash it so i think next time i make this pattern because i did like the pattern the instructions weren't great but i did like the pattern next time i make it it'll be something nice and flowy and really fluid drapey floaty fabric maybe like a viscose or a rayon or something like that so those are the couple things um but i really do love the pattern Probably gonna have to do something in the bust there too because it just because it's so heavyweight it doesn't lay nice on my chest. So I think that is all I made. I think I got through my whole list. Did you sew much in November or were you working on Christmas gifts? I gotta get to that now. Oh, except, except. My husband is building my son a bed, which we've been meaning to do for like a year. So that will be in like today I'm filming is Monday. You're gonna see this Tuesday. I think we can probably bring it into his room Wednesday night, as long as it's not still too smelly from the stain. So I wanted to make him new bedding. We're doing like a baseball theme. So I, yeah, sheets and pillows and a, maybe a duvet cover. So I have the fabric, I bought the fabric so long ago. So like, I think a year ago, maybe not. Yeah, a lo it's been a long time. So I want to try and get that made up today. That's my project for today, I guess. Tonight, when the kids are in bed. Holy lanta. <laughs> anyway, you can follow me on Instagram to see if I made that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.